Sunday nights at 9. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan, and in for MBJ this morning, Scott the Cow Guy, Shalady, Fox Business Good Regular. Morning. Morning. And uh, Robert Johnson, he's the founder of BET, uh, first black billionaire. So BET, like uh, first part of this century for like $3 billion. He was on with CNBC and had this to say about the current political climate, including, uh, you know, a response to the question of uh, which Democrat are you supporting for president? The party, in my opinion, has moved for me personally uh, too far to the left. And for that reason, I don't have a candidate in this particular uh, in the party at this time. I think at the end of the day, if, if a Democrat is going to beat Trump, that person, he or she, is going to have to move to the center. And you can't wait too long to do that. Uh, because the message of, of some of the programs that the Democrats are pushing are not resonating with the majority of the American people. Robert Johnson also said uh, African-American employment is at its lowest level. I give the president a lot of credit for moving the economy in a positive direction that's benefiting a large amount of Americans. Well, that's weird. Why would a successful black entrepreneur be supporting a white supremacist for president? Exactly. I saying mean, that, nice things about him. That should scare the left a lot, just listening to that man talk. Number one, obviously, I would say it's be me, me being a common sensocrat. Uh, he speaks truth. Common sensocrat? Yeah, that's, that's you. Yeah. That's your party? Yeah. I mean, it stems from the fact that, you know, I grew up working on a farm. I mean, it's not hard. If it's raining, get an umbrella. You know, don't, don't spin the rain. You know, it's just... <laughs> it's, <laughs> I mean, it's we don't have that much, you know, anymore. I mean, that's it goes to. I mean, I don't want to get off the to topic, but I mean, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes or no? What's the problem? We're, the census is, to, you know, to anyway. So yeah, th it, this should scare the left because this guy is speaking sense, and obviously, being a very wealthy black guy, they'll probably try to blame it on the fact he's wealthy and he's lost his mind. Or he's lost, he's lost touch with the yeah, struggles. Exactly right. right. Yeah, yeah so he's not that's, down that's with the struggle. That's what I'm trying to think. You know, it's, I'm watching Trump's, you know, Fourth of July speech. How are they going to turn this into a negative? Well, how are they going to turn this guy, you know, this is talking to a negative? It's Ricky right. It's because he's made too much money. Well, I, I mean, I guess. But based on what I hear from the left, uh, what I hear from uh, Bobby O'Rourke, who was on the campaign trail in Tennessee, <laughs> uh, Bob says, uh, this country was founded on white supremacy. Every single institution and structure we have in this country still reflects the legacy of slavery and segregation and Jim Crow and suppression, even in our democracy. I'm not sure he knows what any of those words mean, much less strung together, but... Uh, the larger claim his, his is father that knows. His, his, yeah, well, right. Yeah. Yes. His larger claim, though, and the larger claim of the left is that uh, we have this white supremacist patriarchal culture and it needs to be dismantled. And it's shocking that uh, Bob Johnson, who's also 73 years old, so he knows something about Jim Crow, uh, is unaware of this, I suppose. For more on this topic, we're pleased to be joined by Julie Kelly, senior contributor for American Greatness, amgreatness.com, who has uh, written a piece on this topic of white supremacy. Julie, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey guys, thanks for having me on. So, so help us, uh, or help, I mean, help us to help uh, Robert Johnson understand the uh, white supremacy that he's missing coming from the White House and from the Republican Party generally. I mean, I don't see how he can miss it. It's everywhere, right? As I write in my piece, and you just talked about Beto O'Rourke. I mean, we had a guy kicked out of Wrigley Field because he allegedly made a white supremacy white power sign. Um, if you drink a glass of milk, that's somehow connected to white supremacy. If you own a dog, you're a white supremacist. So, um, and, you know, this is the new, I call it the new Russian collusion hoax. This is the way to align Trump supporters and Republicans with the bad guys to kind of peel off nervous Republican voters from supporting Trump next year. And, you know, when you have somebody like Johnson talking a lot of sense like that, um, he's going to be a target of criticism, no doubt. And uh, the Antifa folks, uh, the courageous uh, people, courageous Americans, as Joe Biden calls them, the Antifa folks who uh, beat up journalists, uh, even Jake Tapper right. conceding that point, they are they are not a problem then. 
They're not. And, you know, this is part of this manufactured paranoia and hysteria is to obfuscate the real violence and the real threat, which is coming from the left. And this is not just Antifa. You know, these are people who are chasing Republicans out of restaurants, who are mocking and uh, tormenting young pro-life teenage boys uh, at the mall uh, during the March for Life. Um, And this is the kind of violence, too, that is being promoted, not on some dark web by a handful of skinheads who, you know, live in their mom's basement. But this you can find on the pages of The New York Times and The Washington Post. I mean, The Washington Post just ran an op-ed a few weeks ago from a woman who was promoting, uh, she's a human rights lawyer, actually, who is promoting and encouraging people to harass and threaten Border Patrol agents at, at church, at their homes, and even subject them to some kind of international tribunal. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where the violence and the threat comes from. But the white supremacy thing, it, it, again, it's kind of like collusion. It's becoming meaningless. This is going to be the big ruse for 2020. So hopefully, you know, the nervous suburban moms who who I am one of them <laughs> uh, and I know plenty of them who don't like Trump's tweets all of a sudden are going to, you know, maybe think twice before supporting the president in 2020 because they don't want to be aligned with racists and white supremacists and Nazis. Julie, I'm Scott Schultz here. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. Um, and the Democrats are much better at staying on point and reading from the hymn sheet than the, than the Republicans ever could be. And I thought about this driving into work this morning because what Pelosi said the other day, I think, is we will become part of that hymn sheet and replace the collusion argument. And it's going to be that make America white again hat that right. she keeps referring to. And I know that that is going to be now one of the tenets of, of what they're going to talk about for the next 18 months going forward because that's pretty easy. It's short. And you'll start to hear more and more of her <coughs> Democrats that stand with her uh, start to you know sing off that same hymn sheet, hymn sheet. And I think that is, that you know, you're right. That is a problem. It is. And by the way, Scott, I'm a fellow Naperville native. Are you kidding so. me? All right. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah, I went to uh, Naperville Central, graduated uh, in 86. Somebody, somebody else who couldn't get into Bennett. 86. <laughs> yeah, 86. Well, they, well, yeah, all those Catholic schools cheated anyway. So. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, go ahead, but, Julian. Yeah, sorry. But, but by, by extension, they are insulting, you know, tens of millions of Americans who and we see this in the latest polls. Right. So there was a poll that came out earlier this week or last week. And the numbers even surprised me. The overwhelming number of Americans who not only support a question about citizenship on the census, they support more security at the southern border. They want illegal asylum seekers sent back to their native countries. And so if you're calling, you know, Trump and his administration white supremacists, then the voters who support it are, too. There's no question uh, but they're banking on, and as I think you sort of indicate in your piece, they're banking on the de- uh, making the deplorables, depl- the deplorables deplorable. Go ahead. Right. You, you, we, they've already excommunicated the white working American from the party anyway. So they're the deplorables. They're the white supremacists. And we think we can uh, make them our enemy because they're a minority. And if we stitch together the solidarity and marginality victim signaling groups and say that it's uncool to be with them, even if you disagree with some of our positions on particular issues because they're white supremacists, then it doesn't matter what their issue positions are, and we can create a majority around that idea. That's right. That's right. And that's why, you know, also you have Cory Booker going south of the border, you know, trying to troll for support in, you know, south (laughs) in Mexico rather than, you know, in the Midwest where they need to be. And so, um, but, you know, Scott, you know, this is especially, uh, you know, a reporter and someone who follows the financial markets and employment, the job opportunities for all minorities and working class voters uh, have never been better. I mean, you saw the unemployment rate for blacks, I think it was 7.3% in January of 2017. Now it's down to about 6.2%. As of May, wages are rising. The latest poll also showed that um, Trump has about 40% approval rating among Hispanics. Um, And so that's an interesting twist, too. 
And Trump has been actively courting minorities, right? So the idea that he's this white supremacist and his supporters are white supremacists and his administration just flies in the face of the kind of voters that he has been trying to appeal to. I mean, you had his son welcome the largest contingent of black young conservative activists in the White House that's ever been there. So, you know, why Barack Obama would have Jay-Z and Beyonce in the White House, and I guess that's, that's supposed to send a message to people, which I think it did. You have the White House, the president and his family hosting hundreds, if not a few thousand, of, you know, just uh, black conservative activists, young people from across the country who are finally listening to what the Republican Party has to offer them and and leaving the and hopefully at some point leaving the Democratic Party. Um, and so this is the only way they can kind of hang on to the little, you know, remaining shards of credibility they have with the minority community. Not to mention Kanye and Jim Brown, too, <laughs> that famous right. sit down. Um, so yeah. so what's the what should the reaction be? Uh, should the reaction be, for, you know, for people who are easily cowered by uh, accusations of racism or white supremacy? Those a lot of those suburban. Well, a lot of those suburban voters uh, yep. should the reaction be to dismiss this as the, the ridiculous claim that it is much like uh, AOC's concentration camps and so many other examples. Okay. Or do you have to confront it straight away and really push back? Well, you know, my <laughs> my option is always the latter. Um, and that's why I think, you know, I wrote this piece and I think more people need to follow up at this. The idea that there's an epidemic or a surge of white supremacy or there's an explosion, there's no data to back this up. It's all evidenced by anecdote. And, of course, even since writing this piece, what's, what's the one example that people bring up? Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Well, that was two years ago, and that was one incident. So that's not representative or indicative of any kind of trend in fact, the FBI can't even get a handle on this. And um, a lot of the reporting that comes to the FBI about hate crimes only is ba- it's, it's, self, uh, it's voluntary, the reporting. And even the FBI admits, even if they try to drill down into what was really a hate crime based on white supremacy, it's almost impossible to do it. Um, and so I think that people need to challenge individuals who bring this up, candidates who bring this up, news outlets. The New York Times has run 770 pieces, articles, columns, mentioning white supremacy since uh, Inauguration Day. Um, so, I mean, that's more that's close to one every day or one every other day. Um, and so, of course, just like Russian collusion, the media is in on this manufactured hysteria. And people need to just push back on it and ask for evidence because it doesn't exist. She is Julie Kelly, senior contributor for American Greatness, amgreatness.com. Her column, The White Supremacy, uh, The White Supremacist Boogeyman, I'll uh, tweet out as well. Julie, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.